have an empty floor plan and wondering how the hell I'm supposed to distribute the rooms inside the house. What is the right way? Well, in this video, you'll know the answer. Hi guys, what's going on? My name is Asha. Today, I'm going to tell you how to design a house how to choose the rooms, locations, and all of this stuff. If this is your first time here, you love architecture, you want to be an architect, you love interior design, exterior, constructions, structures, all of this stuff, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. The foundation of designing, dividing the house spaces, and making the perfect house plan is the most important thing in interior design. As an architect, you can't ignore this step. The floor plan step, the step of choosing the room's locations, and how the rooms connect to each other. This stuff you must know actually is the first thing you learn in architecture school, so this might not be strange to you or new if you're an architect, but I have to explain this in order to start interior design with a strong foundation. Before you design any house, you must do site analysis, you already know that. I have explained everything about site analysis, if you don't know how to do site analysis to any project, you can watch this video over here. But I'll talk a little bit about what you need to know. The first thing you need to know about the local climate. This absolutely play usual in the design process. For example, if the area is snowy, has rush winters, you can use the slumber roofs. This can help the snow to slide off. Or inside the house, it's very nice to add fireplace. If there is an intense sun rays, you can reduce the heat by using sun breakers or shaders. You'll be able to know when to use large windows, small one. There's many things to do when considering the local climate, but this part is for exterior design, we'll talk about it later, let's stay for now in interior part. How the climate helps us in the interior design? This can help us a lot with the choosing colors. When I say colors, I don't only mean the walls, but also with furniture, accessories, ceiling, the floor, everything inside the room. When the climate is hot or cold, you have to decide the correct color palette that suits the climate. If the room is hot, you want to make it cooler, and if it's cold, you have to make it warmer. You can do that by choosing the correct colors. We'll talk about colors later in specific videos. In addition to colors, it also helps us with furniture's fabric. If the climate is hot, you can't use fabric that makes you feel hotter than you already are. Also, fabric needs its own video, but I'm telling you that to keep it in mind. I can't tell you everything now in this video, so write this down. The climate helps us with the choosing colors and fabric, also with materials. Should I use wooden floor, ceramic, stone? This can help you to make the right choice. Now you have the climate information to help you with colors, materials, fabric, and furniture, but that can't help you if you haven't decided where each room is located inside the house, which is the main topic today, right? And you can decide if you don't know the insulation. The first step is insulation. This you take from the sun itself, which is provide warmth and heat, in addition to its economic benefits by relying on nature's resources. What does that mean? It means when designing a house, you must take advantage of the sun rays, taking into account protection from its harmful effects. In English, when you want to choose the living room location, you need to put it in a bright place. So you choose the south side or southwestern side. Why? Because here we have the sunshine can enter the house and remains for a long time. You don't want to make the living room brightless. It's living. We live in it. We spend our time in it. It has to be bright. And that helps us a lot if the climate is cold. But if the climate is already hot, you don't want to make it hotter than already it is. It would be very annoying to stay in the living room. So this is a problem. And you as an architect, it's your job to find solutions like sonar breakers or using mirror to reflect the sun rays. There's many solutions to reduce the amount of the sun rays and heat. At the same time, you keep the brightness in the room. So here, as we said before, we take advantage of the sun rays, taking into account protection from its harmful effects. Also, you can add solar panels above the sun breakers. It's a good idea. So living room, dining room, and guest room should be in the southern or southwestern side. So south is taken, we still have north and east. About the north side, this side is always lit, but you can see the sun or the sun rays. There is no sun, but you have light, a clear and cold light. This side is very cold, very cold in winter because there is no sunshine here. You can use it for stairs, hallways, or maybe for workshop. 
because when you draw our work in the workshop it's very annoying to have sun rays or sunshine in in this room so it's very useful in workshop the east side we use it for bedrooms the, these rooms you only use it in the morning or when you go to sleep you don't really need sunshine during the day because you are in the living room right and the eastern sun comes only in the morning it can help you to wake up about the kitchen you can put it in the eastern or northeastern side because it's not that hot and the sun is only exists in the morning you don't want your fridge or the electronic stuff to be ruined by the sun also the kitchen is always hot especially when you start cooking so you don't want to make it hot and bother yourself with the sun rays in here at the same time you don't want it in the north because the kitchen is always damp area it's always wet so you need a little sun at some time in the day to rip off the moisture and prevent mold the bathrooms, we don't really care about the sun because it has a small window unless you are designing a classy bathroom like this one but even in this, you don't really need sun rays or sunshine the windows in the bathrooms more likely for ventilation but it's very good to have sun in here to fight moisture and prevent mold Step 2, ventilation It's very very important to play a huge role inside the house the first thing you want to consider about is the bathrooms. You must put the bathrooms in the opposite side of the wind. You can't put it windward. You want the bad smells to go out of the house, not to come in, right? So you need to know the wind's movement. The same is true with kitchen. You don't want the food smells to come inside the house and stick for a long time. You might tell me what if the wind and the sun don't match. You told me to put the kitchen on east or northeastern side. What if the winds come from the same side? Well, wind directions vary from country to country, but the sun's rays are the same everywhere. Let me tell you the priority is for the wind. You can break the sun with sun breakers, but it's very hard to stop the winds to come inside the house, right? You have to think very hard for a long time to choose the right decision. You can't find the perfect place, a perfect location with the four directions. You might have a house with one elevation. What can you do? You already know that the living room has the priority to be illuminated. The bathroom doesn't really require the sunlight. You will use it for a couple of minutes. Also, it's true with bedrooms. So, it's the process of thinking. Actually, when you do all of this and you get a stock, close your eyes and imagine yourself inside the house inside your design what makes you comfortable is it comfortable to spend all your time in dark living room just because the bedroom in the bright side always imagine yourself inside the project all of this we do as zoning just like i did now so congratulations you know what each room requires and have an idea where each room is located but that needs actions and your action is on paper you start to draw your floor blank if you translate your zoning like this, this is disaster. Anyone can do that, but you are an architect. As an architect, this is a big mistake. I will show you your faults. Here, you enter the house over here and see the bathroom's door. How fascinating is this? You open the door for guests and your brother comes out from the bathroom. There is no privacy. We continue walking through the house and we want to go to the living room which is far away from the lobby <laughs> wait a minute we don't have a lobby and we need to go through all of these bedrooms to finally achieve our destination which is the living room in our way to the living room or the guest's room the guest already saw your messy rooms and the private stuff finally you want to go to the kitchen to get a cup of water for your guest to find yourself here and you have to do all of this all over again to finally go to the kitchen you might think i'm overreacting or over explaining but there's many houses like this and that's wrong so to help you with this you need to know that there's two parts of this process the outside part where we consider sun site analysis and winds and the second part which is more important from the first one where we consider inside the house the relationship between the rooms Keep in mind is the house have two sections, two parts. The first one is the morning or day section, which include the living room, guest room, dining room, kitchen, balconies, and WC. And the other section is the night section, include the bedrooms and bathroom. 
So how to choose the right position? We already choose the right one according to sun and winds, but that's not enough. You need to understand the relationship between the rooms. Let's start with each room individually. Living room and dining room, in addition to sun, winds, and the view. Remember, view has always the priority. Always. Anyway, it needs to be close to the kitchen and the lobby. Because if you have a guest, you don't want him to walk through all of the house to finally sit. No, you need to open the door. He enter to a small lobby that might has a mirror, shoes, cabinet, an umbrella holder, etc. Then he will directly enter to the room he will sit in, either the living room or the guest room. If you have a guest room, you don't have to put it close only to the entrance, but it has also to be close to the kitchen. Because when you need a water for your guest, you don't want to go far away just to have this water. And in many cases, the dining room is open to the living room. So when you prepare for lunch, you need to be close to the kitchen. Also, when you have a guest room, you don't want the guest to see your kitchen or dining room because the guest doesn't have to be a friend to all of the family. If you're hungry, you don't want to wait your father's friend to go. So you finally can eat. No, you just can't eat without being seen. And it's very important to have a WC just for the guests. In order not to let them to go to the nice section, the private one. But if the house is small, it's okay, you can choose a place where it's close to the both sections. The lobby has to be the room distributor. There's an obvious entrance to the both sections. You are in the lobby, you have two, two options, either to go this way to the night section or this way to the morning section, the day section. About the kitchen, it has to be very close to the entrance. Because when you enter the house with food or anything you've bought, you don't want to go deep in the house. You just enter, find the kitchen without going deep in the house to the living room or the guest or the bedroom. That was for the morning section. It's very important to enter each section with separate entrance. You have to make sure that the bedroom's doors are invisible to other rooms. There is a corridor leads to them. Or if the house, two stories, you will use the ground floor as morning section and the night section on the first floor. This is in case the entrance door in the ground floor. In this situation, you must have two bathrooms, one upside stairs and one downstairs. It would be very nice to add a tiny bar, have a small fridge for water or chocolate in the first floor. Because if you have a kid, you don't want your little kid to wake up in the middle of night to go downstairs to have a cup of water. It's not safe for him. So it's more safe to stay in the same floor. Most times the warehouse located in the attic or the basement, but if it's a room, a specific room, it's better to enter this room from the kitchen. And it has two doors, one from the kitchen and the other one to the garage. Another last thing before you go, if you have a guest room, it has to be bigger than the living room because there is more people going to sit in addition to the family members. If you have any question, if you have, if you need any help with your projects, with your plans, let me know to help you here in the comments. I'll be glad to help you. Also, if you love architecture, you want to be an architect, you love interior design, exterior, and everything related to architecture, please consider subscribing. Have a nice day and good luck.